What's going on guys? Welcome back to RC Every Day. Back again on the sand scorcher, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. So I made some changes. This cage is not going to work. Once I got the body kind of complete, put the window in it, um, off camera, it just does not fit. Um, I spent some time on the bench grinder trying to make space. Um, there's barely anything left in these corners and it just will not will not jive right. Um, it's just hitting the window now up here. This part, this this curve doesn't even match the inside of the body. Um, tried cutting the legs off and thinking I could lower it a little bit, but then this bar is right across the top of the windshield in the front. Looks terrible. Um, also, no way to attach it. You can see I tried to drill and tap this, end up breaking a couple drill bits. And uh, yeah, I don't know what this metal is, but it is pretty solid. So I decided axe the cage for now. Uh, we'll save that maybe we can use it on something later also getting rid of this front piece this it just bugs me it's crooked and that's that's the how it had to be bent into place to fit um and i messed it up trying to bend it when the paint wasn't fully dried we got paint stuck on the bottom of the chassis but it is what it is these look good with the front exposed um, i mentioned in the last video i sprayed the chrome with the satin clear um, came out looking real nice put the headlight lenses back on um, I'm still happy with the body. I went ahead, installed the, the glass. Um, like I mentioned before too, I broke one of the mirrors. I did go ahead and install the factory rear body mount. I've never had one of these put together, right? Um, I'm on the fence. I still have these 3D printed inner fenders for the rear. Uh, they have to be bolted on. We might be able to glue them, but uh, they don't fit great. It makes taking the body on and off a little tedious. So we, we'll play with that later maybe. Um, it does have a rear deck lid, but we're running no back window, so we can have access to the stock body mount. So, crisis number two. Um, sunroof is not seated all the way. There's no fixing that without breaking it out, and then I'm going to have glue in there, and it's never going to go back right. So it's going to stay. Uh, the tail lights I painted, um, I had to soak the nozzle of that blue paint in thinner, and apparently I rushed it because it was raining earlier, and uh, that's what we've got left. And I think it actually kind of looks cool. Um, looks like they were white, like the bug was originally white or something. I think that one actually goes on this side. And, uh, yeah, it looks good. I've got the lenses. That one will kind of stay in. This one got a little bit bigger. So I'm about to hot glue these together and figure out how to attach them to the body. So my hopes is I'm going to put hot glue in to hold the lens into the housing. And then we're going to pump this full of hot glue and stick it on the body and I'm going to put the screw in from the back in hopes that it will dry in the hot glue and we can actually thread and take them on and off if we need to. Uh, also when I got the body mounted without the cage, um, I put this in the stock location, it's got the stock spacers in it. I took the sliders off and got everything aligned with the chassis so now the sliders fit perfectly up against the body sitting down a lot lower like it should but I did have to notch the rear uh, deck lid to fit the bar in the back and that's going to be the same whether I run this aftermarket bar or the stock bar um, There's really no advantage. This one sticks out a little further uh, once we get our 3d printed engine in the place and start mocking that up. We'll see if we really need it or not um, I do kind of think that's steel. This is very lightweight aluminum Having that weight in the back. Maybe maybe we can do some wheelies. I don't know <laughs> this thing wasn't ever quite fast enough for that, but it does get down Another thing too with blues in the cage, that's a lot of weight. That's probably maybe two pounds, pound and a half, somewhere in there. It's it's a lot of dead weight. And we lost all this dead weight off the nose. Um, that thing was just a horrible, horrible looking piece. <laughs> the, the way the front cage mounts, so to me it's got nice little end pieces that go on the bars that bolt to the chassis and it's just a nice looking unit. Um, that is not. But after getting the body all done and stuff, I think the nose of it looks better. I've seen some pictures of some other folks been sharing with me on Facebook of theirs, and uh, a lot of them don't run the front cage, and I just lost the taillight under the table. So let me get the hot glue gun heating up, and uh, yeah, we'll start looking at taillights.
because I've got the uh, Night Customs engine mocked up. Uh, it's not fitting, of course. We're gonna have to trim some more of the deck lid. I hate trimming after we painted, but I don't have a choice. Should have uh, test fitted a little further along. I was, that cage was holding me back because I couldn't do the body mount. Now you see the body mount is not clipped on and we are setting on the breathers for the scale flat four. Um, I've got the little bag here with all the uh, resin printed parts, the belts and pulleys and distributor and all that. Uh, they just got the Stinger exhaust mocked up on there. See how high it sticks up, looks cool. Make sure it fits our aftermarket cage, it does pretty well. So, yeah, looks like we've got to cut it pretty level with where we've trimmed that. Maybe even higher, I don't know. I'm just gonna start cutting and see what happens. All right, first rough cut. Yeah. Still sitting closer on this side. <laughs> I don't like it, but gotta do it. Make sure I got the body on straight before we do any more. I went ahead and cut up the edges of the deck lid and straight across, um, still, still hitting that side especially. Uh, it's pushing it up, so. Oh, I think I'm gonna notch it. And here, straight, I'm not even looking at it straight. So let me mark it with something. Do a little razor blade. I don't know if I could take exact little squares out of it. But we have to try. Dang breathers. All right, I think that'll do it. Um, not sure yet what to do about the edges. I really want to black out the inside of the body because right now I don't have any interior at all. <clears throat> um, it's a little late to spray it. <laughs> so I'm not sure yet what we're going to do about that, but we'll hit that edge when we get there. Um, I could mask and just paint the underside of that blue, but then we got to come back and dull it and do all the things to match it. So I'm not sure yet. But anyway, we're going to move forward with painting the engine. So let me find, I'm going to look at some pictures. I don't even know what color to paint the engine. Um, you can see it does fit over the transfer case. I had one of these engines on this body, on this chassis a long time ago, and we robbed it to put on the Volksrod. And uh, <laughs> uh, but that part was already painted black to kind of blend in. So yeah, I need to look at some pictures again and look at my other one. I know what I'm going to paint the tailpipe. So if I have any. I use uh, just a regular, where is it at? Rust-Oleum chrome paint. And then once we hit it with the rust streaks, it looks like iron pipe. It's a very cool looking exhaust paint. Um, I like to do that on pipes of all kinds. So that's my plan for the exhaust. But for the rest of it, I have no idea.
All right, guys, it's hard to see some of the detail in there, but I'm pretty happy with that. It's good enough. I didn't want to go over the top with colored engines and things like that. So I am digging it. It's good enough. I'm definitely not in the mood to do plug wires or anything like that on it, but I think we're going to call this one done for now. Um, there's still a lot of stuff to do. We still have to figure out electronics, get a servo mounted up somehow in this. Um, this is not really utilizing the factory tub for electronics. Um, I would like to do a little bit of interior. Uh, I hate that I had to scrap the cage, especially after I spent hundred whatever dollars on it, but it was just not working. Uh, so I, I'm pretty happy with it though. The patina, uh, this is really my first ever kind of light patina. I usually end up going way overboard and uh, not having the self-control to limit myself with uh, how far it goes. And this, this came out absolutely perfect as far as the things I wanted to accomplish. I wanted it kind of a satin finish, which we did very well. Um, I wanted to highlight the door gaps and things like that with the wash. Did that pretty well. It's a few areas we could do a little bit more with, uh, but I'm digging. So I'm going to show you some products and stuff that I used on this because I really kind of didn't talk a whole lot in this video. I'm going to grab the paint cans and we can talk about where they are and how I used them. All right. So again, we scuffed it all down with the red scotch bright. Um, I don't even know where you get that stuff. I've had that for years. Um, super good to dull down things. It really took all the sheen off of this Rust-Oleum paint. Um, gave us kind of a textured finish where we could actually get the wash to hold to it. Um, this stuff, somebody actually put me onto this a couple years ago through YouTube. And uh, yeah, it's Tattered Angels Color Wash Tint. This color is called French Roast. They all have Fufu coffee names. <laughs> um, I found this at Michael's. Uh, they were discontinuing it actually. I've got a couple different shades, but this is really the only one I use and it's about half full So I need to look into getting some more of that um, The headlights so the headlights are just the bare chrome. There's a little bit of black wash on them from the black wash obviously, but after I scuffed it I sprayed the whole thing with this satin clear. This is a VHT. This is a I'll Say like a $10 can of paint you get this at O'Reilly's or AutoZone places like that, but this stuff uh, especially when we use the rust streaks on the other bodies I've found, especially Lexan. So the rust streaks interacts with Rust-Oleum paints. So if you start wiping it on there, if we'd have put rust streaks on this, it would have just taken the white paint right off. And uh, this stuff allows us a seal coat basically over that to protect what we've got and it allows the products, even though this is water-based, it's not gonna take the paint off, but it just adds a little bit of depth and uh, it really gives you some time to work with the products. It allows them not to dry immediately. And this is like high temp for brake calipers and engine parts and things like that. But I do like this stuff a lot. I've tried other satin clears, even like the Tamiya satin clear and stuff, that they're expensive little cans and you just don't get the same effect. I think a Tamiya satin clear in the tiny little can is the same price as what this thing is. So that being said, um, I'm not in love with how the tail lights came out. I really wanted them to be the body color, but <laughs> it's just at that point in the build, like I need a break, but doing the lenses, cutting them, hot gluing them and putting the screws in from the back worked fantastic. Um, I don't know that they will pop right off if we take the screws out, but it's just another layer holding it in. So, um, I like the look of it. The, I, you could put LEDs in it if you really wanted to. I, I don't like wiring and all that stuff. So yeah, um, I painted the engine with this SEM trim black. Uh, this is another really good product. Again, this, this can was $15. Or actually, it was more than that. I bought two of these at Advanced Auto Parts. They're an SEM distributor, and it was like 46 bucks with tax. So, very expensive paint, but this stuff is super forgiving. I was in a very big hurry when I painted that engine, and it ran like crazy. I had puddles, and it dried even and smooth, and it's it's very, very forgiving stuff. SEM paints, um, If you're, I, I may actually try some of their regular rattle cans <laughs> for color and things later down the road. Um, so the, the exhaust I did in just regular Rust-Oleum or Krylon Chrome, I think it's Rust-Oleum. Uh, I ran out, I threw the can away. So <laughs> my old trick, it didn't work as good. I sprayed way too thick. Um, you, it's, it's usually very forgiving. I didn't let it dry long enough, but then I used the AK rust streaks on that. And that actually, you want it to eat into it. And that's how you got to get that dull rusty pipe look. That's just what I call it is rusty pipe. Um, I use that on all these Volkswagen engines I've done in the past. 
Um, the other one I'm looking at up there on the shelf looks way better than this one, but it is what it is. Um, I used a silver testers enamel paint pen and just painted a couple details on here. Um, I used the rust streaks. I think I, yeah, I used the rust streaks on the SEM trim black on the engine and uh, gives it a very nice dingy effect. I'm not sure if it's even coming out on camera. Let me pop the body off. You can see it a little better. But I hit the intake lids and a couple little things with the uh, silver paint pen. And I kind of had a happy accident with that. You can see like the pulley down here. It was, I used the same paint pen or the same brush. And it got a little mix of the silver paint and the rust streaks because the rust streaks is eating into the silver as I brushed it. And uh, yeah, it gave me a, a little dull silver finish. So I hit the center of those pulleys hit whatever this little rudder thing is on the side and just kind of brought a little bit of tint to it, I guess we'll call it. Um, it has the push rods on the bottom. Painted those silver with the paint pen as well and, and just let the rust streaks do their thing. So like I said, I'm wrapping this project up. We still got a lot to figure out with electronics and interior. Um, the dash and things that I've seen before for these, they were all available on Shapeways. I don't know where those are gonna be available at now. I'm sure everybody that had a Shapeway store, uh, Night Customs even with this engine, I bought this <laughs> a year ago for the, to do this and I just kept putting it off, putting it off. But uh, I'm sure all these guys will figure out somewhere to either sell files or something is gonna come back and take Shapeway's place because it was really needed in the community. Um, it was nice to get a super high quality um, SLS or MJF print, not have to rely on home printers and, and all that mess with the lines in it and all that so i'm sure something will come around but if you've got a line on a volkswagen dash or door panels even um, we'll figure out something but we got to get servo mounted um, we have some spots here on this chassis where we might be able to rig something up like i did on the previous one um, if push comes to shove we may have to go back and get a whole tub that this would have had and mount the servo way over here and have a giant tiny linkage and go back to stock with it i guess we'll say but I think that's gonna wrap it up. So I appreciate you guys watching and following along with this. Um, it's been kind of a challenge, but this has been invigorating in a way because I've been, like I said, I haven't done a whole lot of builds in the last couple of years because of the kits and the website and the branding and all this stuff. Like I've had to focus on the product and do things that are related to the product. So to get back to just the regular RC build that I don't have to put my name on other than how I built it, it's been kind of fun. So I've got another uh, kind of custom build going and we're going to build a tow truck. So I don't know what, how that's going to turn out, but follow along with the channel if you're interested in building cool RC cars. And uh, appreciate you guys watching. Get out there and have some fun with the hobby. Keep it scale and I'll see you next time.